Hi everyone, Dave here, East Rosebud Fly and Tackle in Billings, Montana. Today we're going to tie an old favorite elk hair caddis. I call mine elk hair in CDC, you'll see why when I tie it. Al Troth of Dillon, Montana developed this pattern back in the early 50s for fishing his beloved southwest Montana trout streams. Since then, it has become kind of a template. Other pattern deviations have been developed from this. One is called the X Caddis. Craig Matthews, West Yellowstone, devised this. Basically, it's, it's an elk hair caddis, but with a trailing shuck of Antron Sparkle Yarn or Zelon, whatever you have. And then there's also another deviation called the Super Caddis, which has a a uh, sparkle yarn wing on it, a pair of rubber legs on each side can be very effective. So the elk hair caddis has developed into many different iterations over time. Let's talk a little bit about the life history of caddis, how they differ from mayflies. Caddis have what's called a complete life cycle. They have the egg stage, the larva, the pupa, and then the adult. The larva on all complete life cycle insects is like a grub, like a, like a worm with basically no legs on it. It develops over time. It goes through several molts. The time of putation, most caddisflies build cases. At putation time, they go into their cases, they close them off, and it takes anywhere from three to six weeks for this transformation to take part. Basically, the adult grows underneath the larval skin. When they're ready to emerge, they cut out of the case, and as they come to the surface, there's basically a fully formed adult underneath this pupil shuck, or this, um, the larval shuck. So as they come towards the surface, it's just a tangle of legs and wings that haven't quite unfolded. They're typically shielded in a bubble of air that they secrete between the larval skin and the pupa. It helps them rise to the surface. So when they come to the surface, they typically pop off very quickly. So many times a, an adult caddis fly on the surface is not the fly you should be fishing. You should be fishing something like a soft hackle that more represents this rising nymph. So with the elk hair caddis, we're going to tie the adult stage of it. I'm using a 1x long dry fly hook. This is Vivas 80 brown thread. We're going to start our thread a couple of eye lengths right behind the hook eye couple of wraps to secure it and then we're going to go ahead and cut off the thread. Now we're going to polymer hackle over the abdomen so we want to reinforce that. This is some extra small ultra wire and copper. Go ahead and tie that to the far side of the hook, a couple of wraps and you can bring your nub in under the thread wraps. We'll wrap it all the way to the back. come up a thread wrap or two because we're going to use some dry fly dubbing. This is just UV2, fine and dry. This is a medium olive. Now the caddis themselves come in a variety of colors. Our most common colors are a brownish abdomen with brown wings, but the free living caddis, the Rycophilia, is also is a bright green abdomen with a tan wing. We also have the micro caddis, which are black body, black wing, and we have some caddis that have more of a grayish body and a grayish wing. So you can tie this elk hair pattern in a variety of different colors to match your local flies. So we're going to use this dry fly dubbing and as always dub it thin. And like I've said before, it's impossible just about to get tight dubbing right up against the hook. So we're giving ourselves some room here to dub back and then forward. I don't like to dub any more than two or three inches of thread at a time. It just becomes unwieldy. It will wrap back so that our dubbing starts right at the back of the fly. And we're going to wrap a tapered abdomen that tapers a little bit more towards the front. And having a nice thin dubbing on your thread gives you a lot of latitude in how you do that. We'll add a little more dubbing. We're going to bring this up to where we tied in, and then we're going to dub back a little bit to fatten up that abdomen. And dub forward. Go ahead. 
ahead and bring our thread up to behind the hook eye in preparation for things to come. All right, now normally, of course, you would measure your hackle against your hackle gauge. The problem with that is, is that constitutes a bare hook, and of course, we don't have a bare hook here. We have a wrapped abdomen, so we want to measure our hackle against our actual abdomen. We want the hackle to be about one and a half hook gaps so that this fly will float on that hackle. Now, there we have the proper size hackle. We're going to go ahead at the butt end, strip off some hackle to tie in. We're also going to strip off some hackle fibers from the side that will be tied in first. That will help us help keep that hackle from flaring. Tie it in on your side of the hook. Make sure that you have the hackle, the shiny side facing you, and some of that bare stem. Go ahead and cut off the hackle butt behind the eye. forward and wrap back. Keep a smooth thread base. Now we're going to take our hackle. I'd like to try to get six or seven turns in here if I can. Try to space them evenly. It makes counter wrapping with the wire go a lot easier. And wrap this almost to the end of the abdomen. Now we'll bring our wire around. And our first wrap of wire, we'll hold our hackle down, and then with each wrap of wire, try to cross it right on top of your hackle wraps. It looks nice, and you also know that you're securing your hackle. When you have a palmered hackle like this, one trout tooth can break it, and it'll all come unwound. So you do have to reinforce it right up to the front and right up to where our thread is hanging. Couple of tight wraps, and we can bust that off. Now we come back in with just the tip of our scissors and cut that hackle off. All right, all we have left to do is basically tie in the wing. What I like to do is I like to add a little bit of CDC fiber underneath the wing. It accomplishes a couple things. One, from the trout's perspective, I think it gives it a fuller look of the wing. Also, CDC is, is notable for trapping air bubbles, and that helps also to float that fly. What I'm using is just regular, called Prime CDC. This is a golden olive color. I'm going to get two of them and align their tips so that the tips are fairly even and measure this so that this is the length of the hook to the bend and you want to make sure you don't measure it canted, you want to bring it horizontal to get the correct length. Brush the hackle back or the CDC fibers from that point so that I have a good division line. The second wrap brings it up on top and then you can adjust it to get the right length. I'm going to cut the more tight wraps here and then we'll cut the butts off. This is an optional step, certainly nothing you have to do. I just like the effect of it. It's what I teach in fly tying class. Now you can use basically any kind of elk hair, bull, cow, yearling. I'm using some yearling elk hair because it's fine and it's appropriate for this size of fly. I'm going to cut off a bundle of this and make sure you really clean out the fuzz and the short hairs. The hair comb is a good thing to use, particularly when you have larger clumps. Now this is much more than I need, but after I stack it we can eliminate some of the short hairs that are inevitable. So we'll go ahead and funnel it into our stacker. Make sure that it's below the top. Okay. Now what I like
like to do is then I also, then I hold it about halfway back and see if I have any shorter hairs that will be shorter than the length of the wing I want. Clean those out. Again, this is more than I need, twice as much. And you should always tie these flies in at least a series of a dozen. It gives you not only a, a better idea of proportions, but you'll waste less material. You'll cut off pretty much what you need and not much more. So after I've thinned this down, I'm going to restack it quickly. Now we're going to measure this wing to the hook bend, just like we did with the CDC wing. We want to make sure it's the same length, like so. Change hands. We're going to cut the butts of this right against our fingertips. A lot of times you'll see an elk hair cat is tied with the hair extending over the eye then they cut the butt, then they try to whip finish underneath the butt on the hook eye. One, it makes putting the fly, or your tippet on the fly in the stream a pain. And secondly, it's not necessary. The head of a caddis is very, very small, and the hook eye represents it very well. We're going to cut our caddis, to, our hair to length so we don't have to do it later. Lay it right on top of the hook, pinch it and the hook together. We're going to make one soft wrap and another soft wrap and then we're going to pull it to flare it and we're going to wrap a narrow band of tight thread don't let go of your wing until you've accomplished this and then we can whip finish right behind our clear eye You can use a single whip finish and head cement, or if you have the room, if you use a double three wrap whip finish, that knot will never come undone. You don't have to use head cement, and you don't have to worry about getting head cement in the eye of the hook. Trim that off a little bit, so there you have. Another fly that's very popular for imitating caddis, many caddis, after they emerge and mature and come back, some caddis drop their eggs on the stream surface. Others like to crawl underneath the surface by a rock or a stick or whatever and lay their eggs down along the bottom. And this is where a diving caddis pattern like this comes from Gary LaFontaine, can be very helpful. That antron wing looks like the bubble of air that they trap against them. Trichoptera is the order of caddis flies and it means in Greek, hairy wing and the caddis fly is covered with tiny, tiny little hairs that help to trap this air bubble. So this caddis will crawl underwater, lay its eggs, float back up to the surface. If it survives the trip, it may come back a month later and lay more eggs. So this is also a good pattern to use once you have caddis returning. Anyway, that's our elk hair caddis. Thanks for joining us as always. Any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks for joining in. See you next time.